Hello everybody, and thanks for checking out my new series, A Closer Look. My name is Adam, but I also use the nicknames Calixian and Nature Nerd here on YouTube. I live in southwestern Nova Scotia, and I've been making YouTube videos since June of last year. I am an outdoorsman and adventurer, as well as a creator and introspective thinker. My wife and I lived in a city for most of our lives, but decided to move to the country a few years ago, which helped to put us back in touch with the natural world. I enjoy doing things the old-fashioned way. I have, so far, taught myself to hunt, fish, garden, raise chickens, and forage for wild edibles. This series will showcase my corner of the world through video and we'll cover a vast array of topics, beginning with the natural world around me, and with episodes discussing flow state and observation, mycology, simulation theory, climate change, and much more. In equal parts art and philosophy, I hope you find this series to be intriguing and delightfully weird. I plan to release episodes every two weeks, so stick around and enjoy. And share it if you can. On with the show. Hello everybody, and welcome to my new series. A closer look. Note the crumholtz on the left. This is a tree that's been stunted from wind and salt. A lot of the trees in this forest are like that. This is a maritime boreal Atlantic coastal ecoregion. Basically a fancy name for a swampy forest near the coastline. White spruce dominates these woods. They are the most resistant to salt spray borne on the strong winds from the coastline. Mixed among them, you'll often find mountain ash, which is where the oyster mushrooms grow. We'll look at those shortly. You'll also find wild raisin. And below that, on the ground, you'll find twin flower, bunchberry, and Canada mayflower. Most of the ground is covered by sphagnum mosses and several other varieties of moss as well. Even in the driest part of summer, there's still moisture if you put your fingers in the dirt here. In this episode, we'll take a look at one of my favorite forgeables. Fairly unique to this type of forest, the oyster mushroom is pretty prevalent here. 
Unlike in my past videos, this isn't a series about identifying or cooking with forageables, but rather a closer look at elements of this ecoregion and the biodiversity it contains. At the edge of the shaded part of the forest, on the fringes of this canopy opening caused by a fallen tree, grows the Pleurotus austriatus, or oyster mushroom. In this forest, the oyster mushroom grows solely on the mountain ash. And that would be these trees in front of us here. Let's take a closer look. These specimens are a little bit older. They've probably been out for a day or two. as evidenced by the bug damage. It's best to pick these early in the day, before anything can get to them, because otherwise you may find some unappetizing guests. Let's take a closer look. One such guest is the pleasing fungus beetle, or Triplax thoraxica. This variety is black with an orange thorax and head. The other guest in this shot, well, we'll talk about him later. Note the beetle's clubbed antenna. You'll see that she carries her young around on her back. Certainly an easy way to get them from point A to point B. And also to keep them protected. It looks like we may have a traffic jam. The pleasing fungus beetle is about half a centimeter in length. They're, they're not very large. Its offspring are about two millimeters or so in length. And here you can see him nestled within the folds of the gills of the mushroom. The young seem to come and go as they please. Normally, they wander about the surface of the mushroom, eating it. They feed on the keratin layer. In fact, that makes up the majority of their diet. Note the mycelium threads. Deeper into the mushroom, especially in older specimens, you may find something even less appetizing. A species of Deptera has left its larva to burrow into the mushroom. Essentially these are fly larvae, maggots if you will common in most forest mushrooms, actually. Watch this one as it swallows. They're almost see-through. This fly species lays its eggs near the new growth as soon as they smell I guess <laughs> I'm not sure how they detect the mushrooms but as they find the mushrooms they lay their eggs on the uh, surface and the offspring burrow their way into the flesh 
where they grow and develop and eventually hatch out. Many a good mushroom has been spoiled by these creatures. But again, I stress the importance of harvesting them early in the day and as soon as you notice them. I wasn't sure how to identify this little guy, but he walked into the shot, so I thought I'd take a closer look. Check out the needle-like antennae. So this other guy was walking through the shot when I was trying to get the uh, pleasing fungus beetle. He looks just like a piece of forage detritus, but it's moving. Again, at under a centimeter in size, this tiny creature lives in a home that it's made. Similar to a caddisfly, this Tinea pelionella, a case-bearing clothes moth, is feeding on the oyster mushroom's keratin. I think I liked it more before he came out of his shell. As the name implies, these moths belong outside, since they can ruin a wardrobe in large numbers. Note the hairs on its head. You can even see the silk that it weaves attached to the mushroom in some places. Join me for part two of our closer look at the Maritime Boreal Atlantic Coastal Ecoregion.